Hello everyone. I hope everybody had a good summer. And today we are going to be talking about resetting the left hand. Why resetting rather than setting? As a college professor, uh, college conservatory level, I do not get to set hands very often because that's for the beginners. And uh, if you are in the process of starting, then you should be watching my basics for the left hand. Uh, but this uh, video would be for those who have been already playing, as all of my students have been playing for several or more years. So when the students come to uh, study with me, a lot of times on every uh, level of every degree, there might be some um, not so good habits in either hand, either left or right. And uh, it's very important that we get to address these problems as soon as possible. And now I will tell you why. There are really two main purposes to be resetting anything. First of all, it's not because I want it to look a certain way or to look good. It's not about look at all. It's all about functionality and how it serves the player and how it serves the music they play. So purpose number one, um, if somebody has let's say, an improper, improperly set left hand. They have tension usually, um, and that would lead at certain point to limitation of their technical abilities, to limitation of their technical growth, and forget about virtuosic development. Uh, this player will, we call this, hit the ceiling, and their development pretty much will be very much impeded or stopped. And the second reason is that if not that, then even worse, the pain will come because we are basically musical athletes. We do a lot of complicated motions with our, both of our arms and hands, and they have to be in perfect order in order not to get tired, weak, fatigued, um, impinged nerves, and so on and so forth, and ultimately pain, which will stop all playing. So in order for that not to happen, we are going to reset the hands, which actually the procedure do very often, especially with my freshmen. And today, there will be my lovely freshman, Delaine, who will assist us in showing how it is done. And not with everyone the same way, but in Delaine's case, it will be this, which is actually a quite oftentimes found case. So um, at this point, I would like to show a video of Delaine, how she played before. And for that, I'm asking if it's OK to do so. Yes. <laughs> As you can see in this passage from Symphony Espanol uh, by Lalo, uh, the delaying fingers used to be kind of uh, stuck together a bit, so they are not very free to move, which affects it, uh, the dexterity, the speed of her playing the passages, the ease. Another uh, problem that Delaine used to have in her left hand, even though we couldn't quite see it in the video from the uh, the angle of the left hand. Uh, it is a very common problem, and that is uh, concerns all double-jointed people, and there are lots of us. And that is when the finger, in her case it was the pinky on her left hand, but it stands in this position, so like this. So the joint in the middle buckles, and it impedes again uh, dexterity, first of all. Plus, it is really just not good for your hand. From a medical standpoint, it's not good for the uh, joint and for the finger and for the hand altogether. So we started our work together just three weeks ago. And uh, the steps we took, I will actually let Delaine tell me what was the first thing that we did in the lesson. Do you remember? So we began with the Milstein exercise. Yes. Quickly run us through this. So we put violin in between the hands. Yes, in, in between the fingers. Second finger. And second then finger we down. Placing third and fourth. Yeah, and exactly. Eventually, we'll move the pointer finger back over to the correct side, and it results in like resetting the thumb and pointer finger position, so it's more natural and less tense. Correct. So when we started like it is in the true Milstein. I believe we also uh, perhaps st started to do with E-flat a little bit, right? But soon you were able to move very quickly 
to the e natural. Mm -hmm. Also, Delaine obviously has a really nice long fingers, so that's helpful in some situations, right? Um, but uh, she was able to move to the whole step very quickly. Uh, another thing that we also kind of did, what I all usually do uh, at the very beginning, I just remember we did like just remembering that we all can do the drumming, mm -hmm. like especially when we are bored, right? We can go drum like this. Everybody can do it regardless of whether they play violin or not. And that's when we can see how the fingers of any human hands will move. And they always move from the bass joint and that's natural movement here. Um, and they will not be opening up or doing anything funny, it's just that kind of movement. And that's exactly what we do on violin. However, it's easier said than done, right? If yeah. I wish I could just like, oh, okay, let me play that, like you said, no, not exactly. It doesn't work that way easily. So we go through certain steps. One of them was the Milstein, and I think on that one, it's a really great exercise because it can reposition your thumb. Delaine's thumb also used to be kind of here, back, you know, in that position. So we got that thumb out of the dungeon, as I call it, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, during, during the Milstein. So, and then it now is in good position. Her fourth finger is strong and supported, as I call it. And automatically with this, for Delaine, she was very lucky, and I think it's because you really processed everything really well. She also managed to unglue all the fingers. All right, so some of the exercises that uh, Delaine was doing for ungluing the fingers um, were, one, this motion, when you separate the fingers, right? You demonstrated this. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, and I would say probably allow both of them to go together. Yeah, exactly. And if yours also can go separately, fine. That won't matter as, as long as your fourth finger is not holding its shape and being a little bit tense. So usually they like to going together. But again, in Delaine's case, she's one of those rare people who can actually do interesting things, yes, with your hand. Can you show what you uh, can oh, do? This, uh, this exercise? Yes. Right. Not everyone exactly. can do that. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Like yes. Yes. So she is lucky that way, fortunate that way. Uh, in any case, but um, for proper functioning, we want to do that uh, exercise very freely, and that applied to the violin, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing with Delaine was that, uh, as you saw in the video, her left hand wasn't having a problem with its shape. Some people have shape like this or shape like that. None of that was present in originally in her playing. Therefore, we didn't have to fix it, likely, uh, luckily. But another thing that was there uh, were slightly incorrect uh, angles of the fingers falling onto the string. And also, since they were kind of glued together, uh, the sensation that she had in fingers had to be slightly adjusted in her mind, in her brain map, so to speak. So for instance, right, to unglue uh, your fourth finger, I told you to imagine that you have a wire running not on this side, even though before you didn't think about any wire at all, right? But that as, as if this wire is running more here, correct? And then you're pressing down further away from the third. Uh, your main problem, main, Delaine's main problem was really the glue, uh, being, fingers being glued between second and third. And so we took care of it by this and partially by Milstein. Yes. It also was helpful there. And then the last thing that we were doing, the very last lesson actually, was to make sure that the third finger also goes all the time in the proper uh, angle at the proper shape, correct? And for that, uh, again, what I mean by the third finger, it wasn't really present in the video because all, all the shape was like this. But uh, sometimes her third finger will do this thing. It will land and go to the side, land and go to the side. And that is, we don't want to do that at all. So we want to land exactly in what I call this streamlined position, really nice position, um, whether it lands on the uh, whole step or half step, the position is always the same. And yes, for that also you are thinking, right, about the wire going in a certain place as if the finger is made out of Play-Doh of some sort um, or some soft rubber and inside there's a little wire and that's where you direct the movement. Very, very hel helpful um, brain imaging. 
Okay. So what I would like you uh, to do right now is to show me, let's say, a pattern scale. That would be, again, the pattern scales that I have videos on. It's uh, scales in one position without shifts, uh, two octave scales. And we will just do, yeah, let's do go from A flat major, uh, which is the lowest scale, and relax those fingers, right? So, yeah, thank you. That was very nice. Now I want you to go to, let's say, fourth position, a higher position, and uh, let's, well, obviously it will be D major there then, with the first finger, right? And repeat the same. If you need to take a bit slower tempo because we just started doing them, fine, or as you please. Okay, very nice. Uh, now, what another thing that we also did with the lane, which is very important, is not only to unglue the fingers here so they don't get stuck like this, but also that they are articulate. So that means that before we land on the string, we need to make, make sure there is some distance between the finger and the string. Okay, very nice. Actually, that was very nice. Uh, and the fingers were articulate. Now, what I want you to um, realize that at this point, because Delaine is really working for her, on, on her fourth finger to be curved and not going into this position at all, uh, she has to bring it a little bit closer to the fingerboard to accommodate that. So you may see, if you're careful watching, you may see that it's a little bit, maybe she does a little bit more of this turn, but that is actually very beneficial at this stage. Later on, the finger is stronger, you can be further away from that, uh, from the fingerboard, and it will be still holding, okay? So that pretty much uh, was what it took with Delaine, who was very quick and very successful, and we're looking forward to more and more achievements with the left hand and beyond. I hope this video has been helpful to you and I will see you later.